Hello, my name is Duncan Fuller and uh, this is tutorial booklet three for beginners. Uh, we're going to be using Flexium 2020 on this for this. Uh, where there's any difference between 2020 and any of the older versions, I'll try and remind myself to um, uh, mention this. What we're going to learn today is how to use global tables to define routes. Uh, so we're going to have objects uh, going to, going to the store area, and um, the route it takes is going to be defined by a table. Uh, we're going to how to set up travel paths, so how we get uh, the uh, forklift truck to uh, move along a path. How to create. Um, we're going to look a little bit about splines in a second, and uh, and how to use uh, network nodes. Uh, so we're going to carry on with our, our model that we uh, created in uh, tutorial booklets one and two. Uh, so if you haven't done them, you need to go, go back to tutorials booklets one and two and uh, do them. Uh, then we, uh, the difference here is we're going to replace after the queue, it went to the sink. We're going to create three storage areas. And we want to flow item one, so it comes along to queue to processor one down the conveyor. To, we want flow item one to go to rack area number two, and we want flow item two to go to rack area number three, and we want flow item number three to go to rack area one. Uh, so we need to, uh, to do that by using a lookup table. Uh, really quickly, these are sort of uh, network nodes. We can drag them on and we can get an object to follow along that path. So this is network node one, network node two, and you can see you've got a double pointer there, which means objects can go up and down here in different directions. Uh, we can uh, convert them to so that they, they're only one way. Uh, we can change them into splines and stuff. Um, we've got quite a lot of um, power over network nodes. So what we're going to do is get the uh, the three conveyors and we're going to add a, a curve to the uh, the two outer ones. We're going to then we're going to delete the sink, create uh, th three racks. We're going to create a, a global lookup table that's going to take the flow item numbers and change uh, change the route path and instead of uh, when we uh, ask it to do transport and send to port instead of using first available etc we're going to get it to do a global uh, table and because we've named the table root it will be able to find it and when we've done that we're going to add some network nodes you can see them here and we're going to ask the uh, uh, the transporter to go up and down the network nodes okay um, that's a brief description of booklet three. So let's uh, move over to Flexim. So here we are in Flexim. Uh, I need to put some curves on these out of two um, conveyors. So let's go to the conveyors section. Scroll up. Where are we? Here we are, conveyors. Put one down there, just a bit. Right, so clicking on that conveyor, you can just about see a faint yellow. Uh, so it's going in that direction, which is which is okay. So let's just put it on there and close to there. Okay, so we've uh, put the conveyor in here. The uh, got the yellow uh, direction, so it's there. So let's just click on there. We can see the um, the radius, the start angle, and uh, the sweep. Um, you can do this two many ways. You can simply just come here and type values in and see if that does it for you. That's not really worked for me. Um, or you can uh, grab hold of the end. Let's zoom up a little bit. There we go. So let's uh, drag it this way. Let's move out a little bit, click on it again. I want the radius to stay at four and it's uh, 90 minus 90. I, I find these values uh, quite quite confusing, so I, I tend to try and drag. And then if you watch, um, what I'm gonna, yeah, I should be fine. I'm just gonna snap it on there. I just wanna make sure uh, in 2020 how the conveyor works. Um, because yeah, it seems to be stopped here. 
and that's because I've got an A connection from this original conveyor to there. So what I'm going to do is stop that. I'm going to hold down the Q key and disconnect and then do an A key from there to there and see if that works. And so hopefully a red box will come along and it's going through now, so that's fine. So let's put another curve on this one. And it's in the right, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Let's just change that back to four. It's going in the right direction. If, for example, that was going in the wrong direction, you can reverse it. Sometimes uh, I do that, get it to look right and then just reverse it just before I snap. So remember, we need to hold the Q key, disconnect from there and hold the A key and uh, reconnect. So let's just make sure that works OK. Yeah, that seems to be fine. OK, so let's stop that and reset. And we're going to replace the sink with the three storage areas. So let's delete that and go and get um, some racks. There they are. There we go. So a rack, rack one. Hold down the F key, rack two, and rack three. So we've got a nice storage area there. Let's connect the Q to uh, each rack, going from the Q to the rack. And let's, uh, what we're going to do is uh, instead of uh, sending them part one, item type one to rack one, we, we're going to do it in a slightly different order. So let's go to our toolbar and allows us to introduce some new uh, new features. So um, let's click on the drop down and go global table. We're going to name this uh, root, and we want three rows, and let's type in the I, item type one, item type two, and item type three. And we want item type one to go to uh, port two, item type two to go to port three, and item type one to go to port one. Right, so let's go back to our model. Um, let's double click on our uh, conveyor queue. Go to the floor tab because this is where the decisions of where things go. So it's currently set to first available to go to the sink. Now we need to click on that and uh, find uh, buy a global table lookup. And it's trying to find a table called table. Ours is called root. And uh, it's going to take the item type from column one. Uh, sorry, the uh, the number from column one uh, as the uh, the direction. So it's going to send to port based on uh, th this table. So it's apply and says so OK. Let's reset run. Wait until we've got a couple of boxes in the uh, in the areas. Let's put them on the floor, which is not great at the moment, but that's OK. Just the way it is. Um, so item type three has gone to uh, rack one. So uh, item type three has gone to rack one. And what's this one? This is item type one. Item one, type one has gone to rack two. And the, the last one is correct as well, two to three. Okay, let's add some uh, network nodes now. So we want to uh, get the uh, the, the the path of the transporter a little bit uh, more defined rather than just randomly going along. I'm just going to move, give yourself a little bit more space for this because just move those back a little bit. Let's just bring that over there. 
Okay, let's go back to this library and let's go and find uh, network nodes. There it is. So let's create a network node and put one there. Hold down F key, go to each one of these. Okay, uh, they just come in as little black black squares. I, 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 I do like uh, the uh, the names, so I'm going to edit show name. You can just about see the name, edit show name on all of them, so it makes a little bit of description a little bit easier when I talk about them. And edit show name. So we're now, now let's connect uh, the first one, the uh, NN1, uh, to the conveyor using an A key. And connect the, uh, the nodes next to the racks. And let's connect node 1. Oh, that didn't work. I'm using an A key. Now we need to connect the uh, the forklift truck to the node. In order, in order for the forklift truck to to know that uh, it is using the uh, the path, so it must be connected to the network nodes. So let's uh, connect it uh, to uh, network node number one using an A key. So let's go from the network node to the uh, the transporters directional. So let's reset. I'm going to, to slow this down a bit so I can make sure everything's running okay. Reset and run. Let's watch now. Hopefully a box will come along shortly so we've got a, a red red box coming down there it's quite slow let's just speed it up a bit down the conveyor and, and oh, so uh, a travel request destination is not reached so something's happened there uh, so it looks as though there's an issue with rack three and if you um this is rack three here and you can see what's happened is i have I must have thought I've connected network node 4 to uh, right 3, and I haven't. So I'll let's stop, reset. No, I haven't there. So let's click on there. Hold down the A key. Connect it up properly now. Just check I've done the others. Yeah, that's fine. So let's try that again. There's a red box coming down. And very hard to see the transporter going up and down I, I might slow it really down just so we can make sure it is going up and down that um, those, those directions and stuff so it's change its speed right down to point two so we can see it i mean that's snail space isn't it for uh, two meters a minute um but it's because i'm speeding up because i'm getting impatient with the boxes coming down and uh, it's still very fun so, but it is going up and down the the nodes and stuff. Um, okay, uh, I thought I'd just add a little bit on here. So um, currently they're just going down straight lines and stuff. So what we'll do is uh, just for a, a demonstration, I'm going to add uh, two more network nodes just for this rack, and I'm going to join them up. And let's make it that um, it can't. So this is network node four, and it's connected to network node one and network node node six. So I'll just prove that to you. Just right-click, edit, uh, show name. Okay. Now it's got to pass either way, so I'm going to say no connection. So if we apply that, um, hopefully that should stop it running down there. So let's just see. Um, I think it's a green box we're waiting for, so let's just crank it up. Uh, here's a red box. Just slow it down, just move it to the side so I can see something happening. Um, there's a green box come in. Let's just slow it down. 
Um, so the green box has come and and it's gone down there it's, and then it's gone back round. So it's, it can go down there, but it's been then forced around here. So let's see if we can find another green green box. There's one coming down. There's another red, red one coming a bit quicker. All right, so let's just slow that down. Yep, and I've slowed it right down now. So hopefully we'll see it's delivered. Wait, it's waiting for a box to come. Um, so it's, it's, it's basically it's done its job. It's waiting for the next request, which is um, looks like it's going to be a green box. A very slowly green box. Come on. Uh, there it goes. Uh, so what should happen is because we close that connection, it's a one way. Uh, it should go back to network node six, five and then back to one. So hopefully we'll see it move along. There we go. Uh, so uh, and it should pick it up and move along. So that's adding a little bit of pass and stuff. So you, uh, you can put floor plans in here. So you could put a floor plan of your factory and you could use these network nodes to uh, force your uh, uh, conveyors, etc., to go particular routes around the factory. I hope that was uh, useful for you. Um, don't forget to save your model. Um, we don't need it for uh, the next tutorial, but it's always good to have these uh, as examples and stuff. Uh, thank you a lot.